This holiday season, let everyone on your gift list open a Knurps automatic folding umbrella. It opens fast, closes easily. Priced at just $21, you'll find a variety of colors to choose from. So for a gift that's sure to be appreciated, choose Knurps automatic folding umbrellas. Marshall Fields and Christmas. Tappy. Got some really cute gifts. Look at these beautiful candles. Yeah. They're so gorgeous. They're gorgeous and they're really fragrant. They? They're very strong. Oh, but beautiful. Yeah. And then we love this gift, don't we? Which looks, it's a little mixed bag. Of... Which looks like a little kid actually picked it out. There's yeah. like hot chocolate and a face mask. I know. They thought this was appropriate for a lollipop mug. Oh, I love that they did. No, I love they did too. Yeah. And you've got like hand cream. I just tried the hand cream. It smells like deep peach. We like it's this really one nice. as well, isn't it? Chasing unicorns. Yeah. Bubble bath. They know what lollipop men want. That's what lollipop men want, isn't oh, it? Yeah. It's so cute. And a little pencil. Great gift. They've got a little, lovely little glass as well. Oh, and these ones are the vegan chocolates that someone makes, isn't handmade. it? Handmade. Which are really beautiful yeah. and lovely. Yeah. How cute. And then lots of chocolates. Lots of chocolates. I'm taking some to yeah. yoga. <laughs> I love those balconies. I wish I had a little balcony. Splash it on, shake it on, spray it on. Denim makes Christmas go with a bang. Then, for the man who doesn't have to try too hard. When we went to Asda yesterday, we went there for a specific reason. Yeah. And that reason... That reason... was the no prawn platter. I'm so glad that they still had them. I saw it the other day. But it said I should probably eat it now because we've got too much food, but... Yeah, and also and it's days. all you can think about, so you might as well eat it, isn't it? So we've got some prawn toast, no prawn toast, in the shape of stars. We've got prawn tempura and salt and pepper, pr no prawn. Yeah. We're not sure if we're going to actually like it, I are we? we the, uh, the, I was only informed yesterday that I was involved no, in the we're eating not sure of it. that I'm going to like it. Right. Yeah, right. you've got to try it as well. Okay. Because I funny with textures. Of, yeah. I can't resist trying like fake meat, fake fish, but a lot of them I don't like the texture. Yeah. Um, mainly I just really I just like tofu. Secretly I just like tofu, yeah. not all this fake and bacon. Yeah. I like fake yeah. bacon. But I'm going to put these in and try them. Okay. Oh my god. See you soon, prawn platter. <laughs> um, I've done a few of the prawn things. I thought I'd do a taste test. Coincidentally, but bought a like a chili dipping sauce. I did, yeah. yeah. So I'll go in for the little prawn toast. 
I've never had prawn toast before. I don't really know what it is. Like, does it have prawn in? I don't understand prawn toast. That's nice. You like that? Mm. Does it have prawn in? Um... I guess so. I guess so, originally, yeah. We had, yeah. We've had we had prawn toast from the vegan Chinese takeaway. It's a bit greasy, but this one is nice. Yeah. Don't we? Try it up a bit. Okay, let's try a salt and pepper prawn. Mm-hmm. Texture not bothering you? No, texture's fine. That's good. Doesn't really taste, much, taste mainly of like, you know, something breaded. Processed. Mm. Processed and breaded. Do you want yeah. to try one of those? Can I try a little bit? Mm. It's going to look really appetising in there. Mm. <laughs> okay, and then this last one is tempura prawn. You do like it, temp tempura, don't I you? I really love tempura vegetables. Mm. Probably more than I love tempura no prawns. Mm. I like that one. It just tastes like, um, <laughs> nothing that tastes really, just tastes like fried something. Yeah. But I my, guess these things don't really taste, taste like fresh prawn anyway, if you had them at a restaurant. Okay. They taste a bit processed. Can I try one of these? Yeah. What's your favourite um, element? Favorite. This one. Yeah. Mm. I'm not getting much prawn flavour. These are the most flavoursome, I think. Yeah, that's true. Those are the most prawny. Most prawny. Mm. But I'm into it in a, mm. you know, beige buffet, 70s beige buffet. Well, they're not rubbery. No. They don't have, like, um, that bite, which is a bit gross, no. when you've had, like, when we've had fake fish stuff before. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'd say it's a big win and would be happy never to have it again. Same, same. <laughs> I never need to buy them again now. Yeah. Have a cracking Christmas at Woolworth, the cracker of a Christmas shopping spree. Woolworth prices. Many of them crack down on Christmas. Woolworth is the place to be. Um, yeah, so I... Um, have started reading uh, Greyhound for Breakfast by James Kelman. It's short stories. And it's short stories published from 1972 to, well, it says present, but I'm not sure when this collection came out. I'm guessing this is from the 80s. Um, so James Kelman's like an author that I've been kind of interested to read for a while because I really like Scottish fiction. And uh, I've had this one in my collection for years, A Disaffection, which is his third his third novel, but I haven't read it yet. I think it's about a teacher, which is why it's got like that blackboard on there. So it's made me sort of pull this out and sort of want to get to it, because I'm really enjoying these uh, stories. Some of them are very, very short, like literally, you know, like a, a, a page or a couple of pages. And I think they were sort of published, you know, in sort of magazines and stuff, and this is just like them all collected together. But it's very much written in a sort of uh, working class Glaswegian um, interior monologue kind of style. They definitely don't have kind of beginnings and endings. They seem to be sort of snapshots of moments in kind of these people's lives. And like I said, like just their internal sort of dialogue. But I'm loving it. Really, really good. And I sort of was just have, having a read um, about his, like on Wikipedia about him. And yeah, he's sort of been an influence on, you know, Irving Welsh and um, uh, Alan Warner. Uh, that kind of thing. He did win the uh, Booker Prize um, at one point, and actually um, Douglas Stewart um, r said that he really loved the book that he won the Booker Prize with, although at the time it was criticised because it was, you know, had lots of swear words and it was the, the fact that he won the Booker Prize was frowned upon by the, uh, snobs. By the snobs at the time. Yeah. Essentially didn't do his career much good. Um, but yeah, he's, you know, proper... Scottish socialist. He's married to uh, someone from South Wales. I just just saw. Um, anyway, what I was going to do is turn you over to Shani and ask. Oh, hang, let me actually. Shan, we recently were asked for our top five films of the year, weren't we? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think people would really like to know 
what you put in that list. Okay. So, um... Is this a countdown from five? Yeah, I'll do okay. it from five. So, I think either God, It's Me, Margaret... That was great, wasn't it? Um, I put that as number five. I loved that one. It mm. was really um, warm and, and sort of nostalgic. Yeah. But... And you read the book just before seeing it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Like reread. And I, and I thought, um, what's the name? Is it Rachel McAdams, wasn't it? Yeah. It was just so wonderful. She it? was such yeah. a good mum. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it felt, had that nice feeling of like, it feels like the 70s, but it has a little bit of, I think it, you know, it feels like it's today as well, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's got like a modern mentality. Kind yeah, of yeah. And then I think I've gone for The Wolf Hour, which is... Um, one of Naomi Watson. Yeah. And I'd say it's not, like... It's not perfect by any m- means, I don't think. And and I think maybe some people might find it a bit boring. But it was one of those ones that I was just really interested in it while I was watching it, and then I kept thinking about it afterwards. Yeah, same. And I think it's probably because Naomi Watts is so good as well, isn't she? Yeah, and it was because it was all, like, set in one... Just in her apartment, wasn't it? And it was, like, yeah. the late 70s... It, had, it was quite sort of um, grungy. Yeah, so she's agoraphobic, is that the right word? Yeah. yeah. And so she can't leave this apartment. And she's a writer. And Yeah, and she's a writer. And you kind of just... And it's just her, really, isn't it? There's, like, her friend pops around at one point and someone delivers stuff to her. Um, but you kind of just find out bits about her as it goes along. Yeah. Um, I thought it was really interesting. Yeah, it's great. And it sort of slipped under the radar, isn't it? So it's nice to yeah. see it on your list. Thank yeah. you. And then I think... I'm going to say my third one um, was Bones and All, um, yeah. based on the book. I love this one. I know we both watched it. I don't think it's in your top ten, is it? No, I didn't. I, I enjoyed watching it, but no, it, I felt it was a bit overlong. I don't think it worked for me. Yeah, I mean, it was a little bit long, but I just loved it. I loved the feel of it. Yeah. I loved the, you know, the look of it as well. It had... I mean, it's, I think it's quite interesting anyway, isn't yeah. it? Because it's like a um, teenage girl who's like a, a cannibal. Yeah, and it's sort of a, a quite sort of amoral. You know, it's not spoiler, I mean, yeah. is it? No. It's quite sort of amoral, isn't it? Like, yeah, it's not yeah. really sort of judgmental on, no. on the characters, even though they're, they're killing people. So it's quite graphic. It's like a mixture of like, it feels a mixture of like a teen film. Yeah. Like a quite standard teen film, but mixed in with really graphic um you know gore and eating of people and then really creepy characters in it as well um i love that one yeah couldn't stop thinking about that one yeah. as well number two i'm gonna go for hollow bookstore yeah so we went to the cinema to see it i was just like so moved yeah. by it it's, it's, made, so my to- it's made my top 10 but i don't think it's made my top five but i loved okay. it okay um, it was just so charming, wasn't oh it? Oh, my gosh, so charming. Yeah. And I feel like everyone who likes books should watch Hello Bookstore. Yeah. Um, so Rosie, who runs Shelf Life, loved it as well, didn't she? And yeah. was, like, really inspired by it. Yeah. Um, we were shocked when we looked on Letterboxd to find that lots of people did not like it and found him annoying. Yeah. And I feel like maybe they were just watching a documentary True. they maybe weren't necessarily like book people watching yeah. it so i think like it is aimed at that market of people that like to go to bookshops yeah. and talk about books and... it's just a lot about just the love of reading isn't there books and then just yeah. lots about people just coming in and shopping and chatting with yeah. him and it's kind of during the pandemic it's as like well. the importance of a bookshop in terms of like a community yes and you yeah. know and yeah and he was just so you just your heart went out to him didn't oh, you? oh loved him yeah he's just gorgeous yeah yeah and then my number one is All the Beauty and the Bloodshed, which is the also a documentary, I do love a good documentary, um, about Nan Golden, the photographer, but specifically about her um, taking on the Sackler family um, and the opi- opioid crisis, um, and about how, like, the Sackler, because she was, like, obviously really famous artist, that um, she felt this was the way that she could protest about it was through um doing protests in museums and also um refusing to have her work shown and actually she's carried on i've seen recently she's refused to have her work shown somewhere that wasn't um talking about palestine as well so it's a really and mm-hmm. you know good way of doing your not a good way but you know a really interesting way of kind of activism isn't it it's yeah. just like i'm not going to let you yeah. show my work 
because yeah. I don't agree with your... Yeah. It was amazing, I thought, this film, because it had, you know, such a mix of talking about, to, um, you know, this addiction and this crisis, personal stories, because it was her, she'd, you know, um, had had struggled with addiction with the, with the with these medications as well, and bringing people together, and just that real power of kind of, um, of doing something, you know, of like community activism again, to almost similar to Hello Bookstore, I guess, mm. in that sense, you know, but yeah, um, it was just great, it was amazing. And, and then you also got a bit of her, like, life story as well, which I didn't really know about, you know, like her childhood and stuff, and bits about her parents and sister and stuff. Thank you. That's my top five. And top two documentaries. Top two documentaries. I, li- I like documentaries. Yeah. Do you know what nearly made my list was that Goff Desert one? I just thought you wouldn't <laughs> let that slide. Yeah. Goff in the Desert was like a really weird documentary about um, the architect, um, Bruce Goff. And it's just like still shots of it. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I, I would have been shocked if that had made your top five. And also five, the Basildon to be honest. documentary almost. Yeah, made that is Utopia, five. town yeah. Utopian towns. Yeah. That was good, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I like kind of I like architecture documentaries. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, Shani. You're welcome. Have you seen any of these films and did you like them? Um why haven't you seen Hollow Bookstore? Yeah. Do yourself a favour. And much, much more. Everything to fill my sack this Christmas at newsagents displaying this sign. And there's one near you. These fishermen's friends are a hit. Um, <laughs> Black current fishermen's friends. Who knew you could get them? Oh, it's like we're in a, it's like yeah. a school photo. Yeah. Yeah. How's that? Uh, that better? Yeah. Yeah. Would you like to ask for a, an emoji? Um, is there a prawn? I think there's like a shrimp or is prawn there, kind of there? some kind of a, a seafood, seafood or a fish if you can find a fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, Thank I had you. a little nap when you were out. I had a nap. I'm going over to my friend Teresa's tonight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just did the last school crossing. It was yeah. it's always very touching. My favourite crossing of of the year is the last one before school breaks up for Christmas because yeah. the kids are all really happy and excited. Very excited. And I, yeah, it's just like so nice. Really nice. Yeah. Well done, Bobby. Yeah. Yeah. Well done to everyone for making it through the week. Oh, we've done Weekend really well. Now. We've all done really well. Haven't yeah. We? Not long to go, and then it's just like just the enjoyment. A little rest. Yeah. 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 Well done, everyone. See you tomorrow. Bye.